Sonny, it's Thursday, and I know I'm talking to you on Discord right now, but I gotta make my video anyway. Uh, but first off, to answer your question of the week, Tony, no, I'm not gonna bother punishing you. We've kind of gotten real, like, I'm not gonna say lax is not the right term, but we've pretty much, I think we've kind of done away with the punishments because, like, they were fun, but it's not that important, really. Uh, but so, what I want, so I'm not gonna punish you. Uh, what I want to talk about this week, though, is something depressing. And that is our criminal injustice system. Isn't that punishment enough? According to justice, me talking about the criminal justice system is punishment enough. Uh, so, this is particularly pressing because there are a couple of big cases going on right now. And I've had, a new, I've had a number of cases in my own life that have been pretty big. And I really want to kind of talk about them a little bit. Uh, so... Let's go on the national spotlight first, and that are the two major trials going on right now, and that is the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, and the trial for the uh, people who shot, who uh, killed Ahmed Aubrey, who is an unarmed black man who was running, and it was two uh, former deputies who kind of took it on themselves to be vigilantes to go and sh to go and uh, killed this this black man who was running. Uh, so I particularly want to talk about more about the Rittenhouse trial because. From what I've read about the uh, trial for those who who killed Ahmed Aubrey, is that it's pretty it's pretty open and shut. I don't think they're go I don't think the defense is gonna pull is gonna prevail in that one, because I mean the facts of the case are very much like no they targeted this kid this guy and shot him and shot him to death. But the Kyle Rittenhouse trial is a little bit different because it says a lot about where you stand on the political spectrum on your opinions on this case. Now, I'm going to take this from a non-political perspective because there's going to be a lot of political talk regarding the Kyle Rittenhouse case. I don't think it's possible, but have fun! Uh, Taylor says he doesn't think it's possible that I'll be able to talk about this uh, non-politically, and I'm going to talk about it legally and less politically. So, for a little context on it, the Kyle Rittenhouse case was this 17-year-old kid, he was 17 at the time of the incident, was in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, I believe is what is, was the state, and uh, shot and killed two protesters and injured a third. Now, there's been a lot spilt on, was this kid a wannabe cop? Was this kid going to start trouble? And again, I'm not going to touch on that, because what I'm going to particularly touch on are a couple of the trial things that happened, and particularly like what I think the verdict's going to be. Now, as of earlier today, there's been there's been no verdict on this case. I have to imagine it'll they'll probably be completed tomorrow or Monday. Because trials like this don't generally I mean jury deliberations can take a long time or they might not. Um, but this case in particular, again the facts is the facts that we saw it was that he carry he was carrying an AR fifteen uh, to a to a protest in, in Wisconsin, ended up uh ended up killing two protesters and injuring one. So a lot of what's been going on in the case, so it started off kind of on an interesting foot, in which, like, not not a legally unsound foot, insofar as, like, the judge was like, hey, you cannot call those, those who were shot victims, but you can call the... You can call people looters and rioters if you can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they were, in fact, looting and rioting. That got a lot of bad press because people were like, what, you, you can't call people who were shot and killed victims? And the reason being is a victim is a very loaded term and can very easily sway a jury. I'm not going to say whether that is right or wrong. I'm going to say legally that was probably sound. I think, like, personally, I don't like the fact that you can't use the term victim, but as a defense attorney, I understand it completely because I wouldn't want the people who my clients have you know, allegedly injured in some way, I wouldn't want them to be called victims either, because that is a very loaded term. I didn't, wasn't super fond of, like, the loaded, or the loaded terms of, like, looters and rioters, but if, since the judge did say, if the state can prove that. And that is a very key part of the case, is, like, the, the big defense for Kyle Rittenhouse is self-defense. Now, legally speaking, I don't think self-defense necessarily applies in his situation, as far as the first two people go. I think How the... How would it be self-defense if he drove? <laughs> well, because if he, if he is being... Taylor's asking, how could it be self-defense if he drove? 
if he was there and nothing happened, we wouldn't even be talking about it. But since he was there, he drove to the, he drove to the event with with a rifle. He can claim self defense if he thought he was in fear for his life. But there are some real caveats to that, and I think this is where it's, it turns it's into the a, intent. Yeah, it's the intent, and also one of the real key aspects of it is can he actually a key provision of criminal law, particularly like self defense as a defense is you can't have you can't use a greater greater force than is put, that is put on you now as far as the the three people who were shot again two were killed one of them was looking to attack him with a skateboard that would i don't think a firearm would apply in that situation because that would not be a situation of the force used with a firearm compared to that with a, with a, a skateboard i think force wise that goes above the point where self-defense is permitted. Now, I'm not super familiar with Wisconsin criminal law, but this is just like general law school criminal law. Uh, and the same could be said for, I think it was known as Jump Kick Man, who was one of the other victims who, you know, just went and go and punched him. That being said, one, one, of, the, one of the witnesses of, of, the, uh, of, the defen- I'm sorry, of the state was the third victim who was shot in the hand. And that is a situation where I think self-defense could apply in that regard, because this third person had a firearm that he did draw on Kyle Rittenhouse and Kyle Rittenhouse could in that situation could have fired at that point that's why it hit the guy's hand there were no he was not he was not killed but that is a situation where self-defense could apply now a lot could be said as far as the actual trial aspects of it and I actually think that if if the jury does vote to uh to convict Kyle Rittenhouse I think there's actually a claim for a mistrial because the state did attack the fact that Kyle Rittenhouse did, a, did try and violate Kyle Rittenhouse's, amend, uh, I think it was Fifth, Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination and his Sixth Amendment right. And that's a situation where, like, I think there could be a mistrial. Now, what I honestly think is going to happen in this case is I think it's going to end up in a hung jury, which means that the jury wasn't able to come to a, wasn't able to come to a verdict, and it goes to a mistrial, and the state can choose to to like re-raise those claims or not in that situation where who knows what might happen. Like, I think it's going to be a hung jury. I think the state will probably try and press charges. It will probably try and go forward with the charges because this is a big politically charged case, but I don't know. Cause it could very easily as well. Just go like, okay, this was a hung jury. We don't want to keep pushing this political aspect. So they might say, we don't want to go with these. We don't want to continue with these charges. I'm not a minor in that, in that regard to say that, but I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be the ultimate, re- the ultimate resolution. It's going to be a mistrial, whether it be the, uh, the, uh, defense file, getting the mistrial or whether it be a hung jury. That's what I think on that. Again, I'm staying away from the political aspect and focusing slowly, solely on the legal aspect of that. Legally, if I were on that jury, I think with the facts we've had, I, I, I would probably convict Kyle Rittenhouse on the, on the two killings, I probably, I don't know what charges were pressed. I don't know if I would necessarily go with, with first degree murder for a premeditated, but I could very easily like convict on like a second degree, like heat of passion moment. But that's, I'm not on that jury, so I can't say that. Uh, but as far as cases in my own life, I have several coming up now. In fact, I've had one that's been a real challenge. It's, I have a, it's a juvenile delinquency case, and obviously I can't talk much about it, but this has been one I've been working with for a, a good long while, and uh, my client ended up back in detention. And it's hard. Like, my client's a really nice kid, just makes a bunch of, just made a bunch of really stupid decisions. And it's been hard. My entire Monday was devoted going to court for, for my client. And it really, like, my client's, you know, still underage, so when he turn when they turn 18, there will be a situation where it's like, okay, the record, the criminal record will be expunged unless it goes to an adult court case. His cases are not in adult court yet, but they're really close. And I'm really hoping that I can get through to my client and say, you're 16. This is not a good path to take. I will defend you to the best, best of my ability. Cause that is my role as your advocate, but it's, it's been hard. Um, again, I spent all Monday working on that case and I will be spending a good portion on Tuesday working on that case as well. Uh, but Tony, my question for you is, have you followed the Kyle Rittenhouse case at all? Tony, I'll see you on Monday. Later, bro.